Here we have a couple of problems uh, that can be solved with a three equation system. So these are word problems. We've got to, from these words, pick out three variables, uh, construct three different equations, and then attempt to solve it. So that's a lot of work to do, but let's, um, let's see how this goes. On the first one, it says, over the last three evenings, Amanda received a total of 96 phone calls at the call center. The second evening, she received two times as many calls as the third evening, and the third evening, she received eight fewer calls than the first evening. How many phone calls did she receive each evening? So we want the number of phone calls for evening one, evening two, evening three. I'm just going to call those X, Y, and Z. So those are our three variables. This is the number of calls for the first evening, number of calls for the second evening, number of calls for the third evening. And right away, I can see one equation that I can make. There's a total of 96 calls. So x plus y plus z equals 96. OK. Now, let's see what we can do with these other facts. Here, it says the second evening. So that's what we're calling y. She received two times as many calls as the third evening. That's what we're calling Z. Um, so I could write Y, the number of calls on Y, is two times the number of calls on Z. So there's an equation. It doesn't have to have all three variables to, to count. And let's see, here's our next fact. It says the third evening, so, so that's Z. She received eight fewer calls than the first evening. Well, the first name, evening is X, eight fewer then x would be x minus 8. Uh -huh. So now we have three equations and three variables. And to solve this, what we'd want to do is um, see if we can you know, solve for the same uh, variables in a couple of equations. We could use the elimination method. We could use the substitution method. Uh, it looks like in this case, um, Let's see, if I solved for z and plugged both of those, the, if I solved these two for z, so I would just, uh, that would mean y equals 1 half. So I'd be dealing with some fractions. I could plug it in there. And then um, I could solve for z, and we'd be on our way. Um, I think um, what I'm going to do, though, is use a different method. I'm going to go ahead and use an equation solver online. And you could try this by hand first and then check your work with this kind of an equation solver, or you could just use the equation solver. Once you know how to do these types of, of systems, I think it's better to use an online tool where you're not going to make a, a silly mistake. So let's take a look at this equation solver. This is one provided by uh, Penn State University. And what we need to do is have all of the equations in this form of something times x plus something times y plus something times z equals some number. And so we're going to have to do a little bit of rewriting with our equations. This one's in the right format. This would be 1 times x plus 1 times y plus 1 times z equals 96. This equation I can rewrite by moving that um, 2z over. So I'm just going to subtract 2z from both sides. So I get, actually, I'm going to write it as 0x, because there's no x here, plus y minus 2z equals 0, because there was nothing left on this side after I moved that 2z. I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So we're going to get negative x plus, in this case, 0y, because there's no y term, plus z equals, and that negative 8 is left there. All right, so this equation, all three of these equations now are in the right form. Let's see if we can plug this in. So the first one is 1, 1, 1, and 96. And the second one, let's see, is 0, 1, negative 2, 0. 0, 1, negative 2, 0. And the last one is negative 1, 0, 1, negative 8. 0, 1, negative 8. All right, assuming that I've typed all those incorrectly, I can just hit solve here. And we get 30, 44, and 22. And those do add up to 96, so that seems to work. Um, we could go back and check some of the other things, but that looks like it's going to be right. So x is 30, and 44 and 22. y is 44, and z is 22. Let's try another one here. 
This one says Salma, Boris, and Jose have a total of $74 in their wallets. Salma has 10 less than Boris. Jose has two times what Salma has. How much do they have in their wallets? So uh, let's call what Salma has in her wallet X, what Boris has Y, and what Jose has Z. It says they have a total of $74. So that's just going to be X plus Y plus Z equals 74. And then let's see, it says Salma has 10 less than Boris. So Salma's X. So she is Boris, which is Y, minus 10. And Jose has two times what Salma has. So Jose is Z. So Jose equals Salma, who's X, times 2. All right, so there are our equations. Now I want to rewrite these so they're all in that form with the X, Y, and Z on the left and the number on the right. I'm going to subtract Y from the first one. I'm get, going to get X minus Y plus 0, Z equals negative 10. And on this one, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to get negative 2x plus 0y plus z equals 0. All right, so that should uh, do it for my three equations. Let's go ahead and plug those in. So the first one, I've already forgotten. What does that add up to? 74. So 1, 1, 1, and 74. For the second one, we're going to get 1, negative 1, 0, negative 10. And for the last one, we're going to get negative 2, 0, 1, 0. And 0. Go ahead and click the solve. And it looks like we have 16, 26, and 32. So Salma should have 16. Boris should have, what did I say, 26? Yeah, 26. And Jose should have 32. So that's a little bit of work with solving um, some word problems um, using a three by three system of linear equations.